Welcome back to another Masterclass with Seven Ways to Wealth. I want to introduce our guest speaker for tonight, this phenomenal man and friend of mine. His name is Orlando Acosta. He is known as the Mortgage Eliminator. And guess why he's known as the Mortgage Eliminator? Because he eliminates mortgages. He is the founder of the Mortgage Eliminator Company. And what he does is he helps homeowners get rid of their 15-year, 10-year, 30-year mortgages by utilizing the court systems. He's about to drop some gems, so you better have your pen or pencil ready to take notes. Orlando, you have the floor. Thank you so much. Orlando, you on mute. All right, my bad. Can y'all hear me now? Yes, yeah. we can hear you. All right. So this is what it is. Um, my name is the Morgan Eliminator. Y'all all know me on IG. Um tonight I wanna really do a deep dive into your contracts. I wanna tell you the difference between bilateral versus unilateral contract. I wanna break down the aspect of how the credit how you finance the transaction and different things of that sort. So I want to go into that in a deep dive. And I'm also going to tell you an unknown secret that the banks don't loan you anything. Quiet is kept. They don't loan you anything. You're actually giving them permission to make money off of you. So but what we're going to do for the next 20 minutes, I want, I want y'all to understand what the element is from the system that, you know, how the whole system began. So I'm going to, I'm going to, I'm going to have a, a video run that's going to break down the whole financial system from the, from the, from how the banking system creates the currency. And then we, then after after the video, then I'm gonna go into my presentation. So the same, can you run that video? Yes, thank you. Right. Can you put the volume on? terms of faith there is. How money is created, the policies by which Can it you is guys governed, hear it? and how it truly affects society are unregistered interests of the yeah, we can hear it. population. A number of years ago, the Central Bank of the United States, the Federal Reserve. What is the advice that you generally get? And that is, inflate the currency. They don't say debase the currency. They don't say devalue the currency. They don't say cheat the people who are saved. They say lower the interest rates. The real deception is when we distort the value of money. When we create money out of thin air, we have no savings, and yet there's so-called capital. So my question boils down to this. How in the world can we expect to solve the problems of inflation, that is the increase in the supply of money, with more inflation? Of course, it can't. The fractional reserve system of monetary expansion is inherently inflationary. For the act of expanding the money supply without there being a proportional expansion of goods and services in the economy will always debase a currency. In fact, a quick glance at the historical values of the US dollar versus the money supply reflects this point definitively, for the inverse relationship is obvious. $1 in 1913 required $21.60 in 2007 to match value. That is a 96% devaluation since the Federal Reserve came into existence. Now, if this reality of inherent and perpetual inflation seems absurd and economically self-defeating, hold that thought for absurdity is an understatement in regard to how our financial system really operates. For in our financial system, 
Money is debt. And debt is money. Here is a chart of the U.S. money supply from 1950 to 2006. Here is a chart of the U.S. national debt for the same period. How interesting it is that the trends are virtually the same. For the more money there is, the more debt there is. The more debt there is, the more money there is. To put it a different way, every single dollar in your wallet is owed to somebody by somebody. For remember, the only way the money can come into existence is from loans. Therefore, if everyone in the country were able to pay off all debts, including the government, there would not be one dollar in circulation. In fact, the last time in American history the national debt was completely paid off was in 1835 after President Andrew Jackson shut down the central bank that preceded the Federal Reserve. In fact, Jackson's entire political platform essentially revolved around his commitment to shut down the central bank, stating at one point, the bold efforts the present bank has made to control the government are but premonitions of the fate that awaits the American people should they be deluded into a perpetuation of this institution or the establishment of another like it. Unfortunately, his message was short-lived and the international banker succeeded to install another central bank in 1913 the Federal Reserve. And as long as this institution exists, perpetual debt is guaranteed. Now, so far we have discussed the reality that money is created out of debt through loans. These loans are based on a bank's reserves and reserves are derived from deposits. And through this fractional reserve system, any one deposit can create nine times its original value. In turn, debasing the existing money supply raising prices in society. And since all this money is created out of debt and circulated randomly through commerce, people become detached from their original debt and a disequilibrium exists where people are forced to compete for labor in order to pull enough money out of the money supply to cover their costs of living. As dysfunctional and backwards as all of this might seem, there is still one thing we have omitted from this equation. And it is this element of the structure which reveals the truly fraudulent nature of the system itself. The application of interest. When the government borrows money from the Fed, or when a person borrows money from a bank, it almost always has to be paid back with accrued interest. In other words, almost every single dollar that exists must be eventually returned to a bank with interest paid as well. But if all money is borrowed from the central bank and is expanded by commercial banks through loans, only what would be referred to as the principal is being created in the money supply. So then, where is the money to cover all of the interest that is charged? Nowhere. It doesn't exist. The ramifications of this are staggering for the amount of money owed back to the banks will always exceed the amount of money that is available in circulation. This is why inflation is a constant in the economy for new money is always needed to help cover a perpetual deficit built into the system caused by the need to pay the interest. What this also means is that mathematically defaults and bankruptcy are literally built into the system and there will always be poor pockets of society that get the short end of the stick. An analogy would be a game of musical chairs for once the music stops, somebody is left out to dry. And that's the point. It invariably transfers true wealth from the individual to the banks. For if you are unable to pay for your mortgage, they will take your property. This is particularly enraging when you realize that not only is such a default inevitable due to the fractional reserve practice, but also because of the fact that the money that the bank loaned to you didn't even legally exist in the first place. In 1969, there was a Minnesota court case involving a man named Jerome Daly, who was challenging the foreclosure of his home by the bank, which provided the loan to purchase it. His argument was that the mortgage contract required both parties, being he and the bank, each put up a legitimate form of property for the exchange. In legal language, 
This is called consideration. Mr. Daly explained that the money was, in fact, not the property of the bank, for it was created out of nothing as soon as the loan agreement was signed. Remember what modern money mechanics stated about loans? What they do when they make loans is to accept promissory notes in exchange for credits. Reserves are unchanged by the loan transactions, but deposit credits constitute new additions to the total deposits of the banking system. In other words, the money doesn't come out of their existing assets. The bank is simply inventing it, putting up nothing of its own, except for a theoretical liability on paper. As the court case progressed, the bank's president, Mr. Morgan, took the stand, and in the judge's personal memorandum, he recalled that the plaintiff, bank's president, admitted that in combination with the Federal Reserve Bank did create the money and credit upon its books by bookkeeping entry. The money and credit first came into existence when they created it. Mr. Morgan admitted that no United States law or statute existed which gave him the right to do this. A lawful consideration must exist and be tendered to support the note. The jury found that there was no lawful consideration, and I agree. He also poetically added, only God can create something of value out of nothing. And upon this revelation, the court rejected the bank's claim for foreclosure and daily kept his home. The implications of this court decision are immense. For every time you borrow money from a bank, whether it is a mortgage loan or a credit card charge, the money given to you is not only counterfeit, it is an illegitimate form of consideration and hence voids the contract to repay for the bank never had the money as property to begin with. Unfortunately, such legal realizations are suppressed and ignored, and the game of perpetual wealth transfer and perpetual debt continues. And this brings us to the ultimate question, why? During the American Civil War, President Lincoln bypassed the high interest loans offered by the European banks and decided to do what the founding fathers advocated, which was to create an independent and inherently debt-free currency. It was called the greenback. Shortly after this measure was taken, an internal document circulated between private British and American banking interests stated, slavery is but the owning of labor and carries with it the care of laborers. While the European plan is that capital shall control labor by controlling wages, this can be done by controlling the money. It will not do to allow the greenback, as we cannot control that. The fractional reserve policy perpetrated by the Federal Reserve, which has spread in practice to the great majority of banks in the world, is, in fact, a system of modern slavery. Think about it. Money is created out of debt. And what do people do when they are in debt? They submit to employment to pay it off. But if money can only be created out of loans, how can society ever be debt-free? It can't, and that's the point. And it is the fear of losing assets coupled with the struggle to keep up with the perpetual debt and inflation inherent in the system, compounded by the inescapable scarcity within the money supply itself created by the interest that can never be repaid that keeps the wage slave in line, running on the hamster wheel with millions of others, in effect powering an empire that truly benefits only the elite at the top of the pyramid. For at the end of the day, who are you really working for? The banks. Money is created in a bank and invariably ends up in a bank. They are the true masters, along with the corporations and governments they support. Physical slavery requires people to be housed and fed. Economic slavery requires people to feed and house themselves. It is one of the most ingenious scams for social manipulation ever created, and at its core, it is an invisible war against the population. As of now, the world financial system is on the brink of collapse due to its own shortcomings. The Comptroller of Currency stated in 2003 that the interest on the U.S. national debt will not be affordable in less than 10 years. This theoretically means total bankruptcy for the U.S. economy 
and its implications for the world are immense. In turn, the fractional reserve-based monetary system is reaching its theoretical limits of expansion, and the banking failures you are seeing are just the beginning. This is why inflation is skyrocketing, all debt is at record levels, and the government and Fed are hemorrhaging new money to bail out the corrupt system. For the only way to keep the banks going is by making more money. The only way to make more money is to create more debt and inflation. It is simply a matter of time before the tables turn and there is no one willing to take new loans while defaults grow as people are unable to afford their current loans. Then the expansion of money will stop and contraction will begin on a scale never before seen, ending a century-long pyramid scheme. Let's say for some reason. So, so with that being said, um, now y'all saw what what they were talking about with the bank. So, um, now I'm going to do this presentation, but this is going to be an interactive presentation because I want y'all to go through this okay. whole presentation with me because I want y'all to understand what this means. So I want each one of y'all to come on mic. And when Christina puts up the presentation, I want y'all to read it. Then we're going to break every section of this down. So I want, because at the end of this presentation, I want everyone to really fully understand every piece of this presentation. Because I want y'all to be clear on everything that's being said and, and presented. Christina, can you put that up there? Yes. Uh, so this is, this is, so can one of y'all come off the mic? And one of y'all come on the mic. Yeah, I hear some people off of mute. All right. Uh, who's, who, who wants to go through the slide, slide with me and we can break this down for the class? Who's going to do that? Anyone, anyone can uh, raise your hand or speak. Um. Hello? Who was that, Christina? Um, I'm not sure. But they probably don't know what they're getting themselves into. Uh, so they're probably not going to sign up for it. Well, Christina, Christina. Yeah. So um, can you, can you break this down so that way I can um, break it down for the class? So, so I was trying to get one of the class members that the would play. Hello. Yeah. You want to come on, Mike, and uh, be? Yeah, I'm just, I might be dragging a little bit because I'm a little tired, but I'm, I'm, I, I like this kind of stuff, so that's what's up. All right. So, Christina, go to, uh, go to page one, Christina. Okay. All right. So, this is what we, this is what we're gonna break down. So can you can you break down the um the content? Okay, you got a, a agenda. One is unilateral contracts. Two is bilateral contracts. Three is what is what is the creditor, and four is banks can't lend. So this is what we're gonna break down. Now we're gonna go through this, and each one of y'all, I want y'all small mic, and then I want. Then we're going to break it down by a section, and then I'm going to explain it in detail. So can we go to the first page, Christine? Read that for me, sir. Okay, hold on. Um, unilateral contracts. Uh, contracts where one party makes another party an offer to perform an act and assent. And assent is promise by performing the act. Two, 
contracts where one party has an enforceable obligation. Right. So, so unilateral contracts are one-sided contracts that play favoritism to whoever presents you the con contract. So, like in that in that video, they were talking about banks. So, any contract that you sign. Like when you're talking about a mortgage, when you're talking about credit card, whatever. That's a unilateral contract that pays favoritism to the company itself. So, Christina, slide yeah. two. Slide two. Can you continue reading, sir? Okay, here we go. Bilateral contracts. In a bilateral in a bilateral contract, two parties each promise to perform an act in exchange for something else. Now, it, go ahead. Okay. It is the most prevalent type of contract. When most people think of contracts, they are thinking of bilateral contracts. In the reciprocal agreement, okay, yeah, that's in the reciprocal in the reciprocal agreement. Each party is agreeing to offer something and to get something in return, such as offering money in exchange for service. For a bilateral contract to be legally binding, there has to be a record that the terms were agreed upon by all parties, which usually come in a signed document. Now, think about, think about that. Think about that it takes two parties it takes two parts to make a valid contract, to make a valid contract between two. So, every, so I want you to start thinking, how many contracts do you enter into every day when it involves two individuals? Think about it. And then when, when, while you're thinking about that, we're going to come back to that. We're going to do a deep dive. Can we go to slide three? And 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 that also, well, you want me to, just, I, I had something to say, but I, I wait. I All, right. Wait. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, okay. I'm going to take questions that they Okay. Have, okay. Have, so. Cool. Yeah. Okay. Um, so bilateral contracts. In order for a contract to be legally binding, it must contain four required elements agreement or the offer accepted by both parties, consideration or the price paid for the agreement, intention, uh, intention to create legal relations or the understanding that the contract will be legally binding, certainty or a clear and complete contract. So that is the element that makes a binding contract. That is the element. So all contracts that you enter into must have that for it to be a binding contract. So I want you to understand what a binding contract entails. That entails these four elements. That's it. No if, ands, buts, maybe, you know what I mean? They can't make it up as they go. So can we go to the next slide? Okay, let it rip. Yeah, let it rip, sir. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, bilateral contracts can cover many different subjects, including selling goods. When real estate is sold, a buyer is contractually bound to pay the seller a specific amount of money in order to get the property. And the seller agrees to hand over the property in exchange for certain for a certain amount of money. A breach of con a breach of contract happens if each party does not follow through on their promise. In a bilateral contract, two parties agree to each do something. Elements of a bilateral contract include offer by the promiser, promisor, acceptance by the promisee, 
consideration for the offer, usually money, of the legal capacity, I'm saying, of legal capacity, or that both parties are of sound, sound mind, uh, and then uh, lawful terms. Right. So it must entail all of these elements for this to be a bilateral contract. No if, as a but. So that makes you think. Have you been signing bilateral contract? Then we go hmm. to the next slide. Hmm. Continue, sir. <laughs> Unilateral, that's versus bilateral? Yes. Okay. Unilateral, unilateral versus bilateral, bilateral contracts. Okay. In our modern world, courts don't often distinguish between bilateral and unilateral contracts and believe, okay, contracts, and believe an offer can be accepted either with a promise to perform the agreed upon action or by actually performing the action. In fact, courts often rule that unilateral contracts become bilateral contracts once the action is performed. Some courts interpret all contracts as bilateral contracts if there isn't clear evidence the party intended to create a unilateral contract. If there is any doubt, courts will assume the contract was bilateral with the promise to perform an action in exchange for something else. The bottom line is that most courts have moved away from stringent applications of unilateral and bilateral contracts and instead look at each contract on an individual basis. Right, so, so this is what it is. When you, when you bring any court action, it's multiple actions that you can bring. You have to break down the four elements that makes a bonding, that makes a bilateral contract. We've already went over the four elements. So we have to raise that into a court. You have to also know that uh, outside of what we're talking about, your deed has, ha there's no law requiring your deed to be recorded. So multiple things can be raised to show the difference between a unilateral versus bilateral contract. Can we go to the next slide? Next, we're going to break down what is a creditor, what, what, what is a true, true, true creditor. Now, this, this comes out of the truth and lending section, 15 U.S.C. section 1602, section G of the Truth and Lending Act. Sir, would you read that, please? Okay, and I need a copy of this, man. Okay, this, uh, let me see. <laughs> <laughs> Creditor, you know what I'm saying? And, and you're using my likeness of my voice and it's, and it's melatonin. Uh, let me see. Uh, okay, so USC code was, uh, 1602. Okay, G. The term creditor refers only to a person who both won regularly extends whether in connection with loans, sales of property or services or otherwise. Consumer credit, which is payable by agreement in more than four installments uh, or for which the payment of a finance charge is or may be required and two, is the person to whom the debt arising from the consumer credit transaction is initially payable on the face of the evidence of the, I mean, evidence of indebtedness, or if there is no such evidence of indebtedness by agreement. Notwithstanding the preceding sentence, in the case of an open-end credit plan involving a credit card, 
the car issuer and any person who honors the credit card and offers an a discount which is a finance charge or creditors for the purpose of the requirements imposed under part d of the of this sub chapter and sections 1637a uh five 1637 a6 uh 1637 g7 1637b1 1637b2 1637b3 1637d8 and 1637 d10 of this title the term creditor shall also include car issuers whether or not the amount due is payable by agreement in more than four installments of the payment of a finance charge or which finance charge is or may be required and the bureau shall be regulation apply these requirements to such car issuers to the extent appropriate even though the requirements are by their term applicable ap ap applicable 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 yeah. requirements to such car issuers the standard appropriate even though the requirements are okay applicable okay, i read the thing my fault only to creditors offering open-end credit plans any person who originates two or more mortgage you know so i'm a, my eyesight kind of off a little bit two or more mortgages referred to in uh subsection a a in any 12 month period or any person who originates one or more such mortgages through a mortgage broker shall be considered to be a creditor for purposes of this sub chapter. The term creditor includes a private educational lender as that term is defined in section 1650 of this Sorry. title for Sorry. purposes of the sub chapter. Private educational lender. So in that definition, who do y'all think is a private educational lender? Educational anybody can anybody can respond. Who do you think? No. One, one more one more time. Let me Federal Reserve. No. You are considered the private education. What is what that definition really is saying that you're extending the credit to the financial institution. Remember, in the, in the video, it said that money is made out of thin air. Individuals create the money. If it wasn't for you, doing business with the bank, the bank could not exist. If, and if the money made out of thin air, there's no true value. How did the notes create itself? By the people doing business with the note, your signature has a value to create the Federal Reserve note. So what that means is they cannot even extend their own credit. The banks cannot extend their credit. Can we go to slide three? Oh, can I say something right quick? Just make sure I got a clear understanding. Go ahead. So it's like playing tennis, but you can't play tennis by yourself. Like in order for it to be a party, it got to be some party people. Like you can have everything you want at the party, but if there's no people come to the party, it's not a party. Nope. You're exactly right. Okay. And then I'm glad you're here because me reading it, every time I read something like this, I, I'm smart and pick up fast. But for some reason, I think you have to over time be able to digest it because it, it sounds like a whole bunch of words, even though it's saying something. Right. It is saying something. But that's why we're going through this exercise. Okay. Walk you through what these definitions mean, Judge. It took me 10 years to dissect this whole system. Man, I can see why. Right. So 
when I'm sitting up here talking and you see me on IG, that's 10 years though. Already, I respect that. <laughs> so you can go to the next slide, please. Legalese. Okay. Um, uh oh, now they got this small. I'm gonna have to. So now this is what what the calls are that banks cannot. These are case law. These are cases, court cases, where banks have been proven that they didn't loan anything. And if that's not big enough for y'all to, to see it, then I understand. No, you know what? So I'm, I'm with reading it, but somebody with the ego eye right now going to have to hit this one. Can somebody else? <laughs> hey, he said somebody with the ego eye. <laughs> 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 I want the reason why I want y'all to do it. I read this stuff every day. I want y'all to read it because I need y'all to understand what these what these terminology mean, and we're gonna walk through it. That's why I'm doing this exercise. And I get on right after this. I don't mind reading. It's just I don't want to be right. choppy when I'm reading it. I know. All right, I think I, I think I got it. Okay. All right, banks cannot lend credit. In the federal courts, it is well established that a national bank has not power to lend its credit to another by becoming surety endorser, endorser or grantor for him. Farmers in Miners Bank versus Bluford, uh, Nat, One Bank, 11, F2D, 83, 271 U.S., 669. Number two, the National Bank has no power to lend its credit to any persons or corporations. Bowen versus Needles, Nat Bank, 94, such and such, all these other numbers. Number three. <laughs> he said all these such numbers. Y'all got to break down the code. Just break down, um, you know, the, 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 the section where you read it. You ain't got to. Yeah, yeah. The section 20 SCT 1024. 176 U.S. 682. You don't have to do all that. Oh, okay, cool, cool, cool. Let me go, let me go to number three. Let me go to number three. All right. Mr. Du Mr. Justice Marshall said the doctrine of ultra virus is a most pow is a most powerful weapon to keep private corporations within their legitimate spheres and to punish them for violations of their corporate chapters, and it probably is not involved too often. Zinc Carbonate Company versus First National Bank. I actually bank with First National Bank. Okay. And then they also have something with American Enterprise Company versus Citizen State Bank. Right, number four, a bank may not lend its credit to another, even though such a transaction turns out to have been a benefit to the bank. And in support of this, a list of cases might be cited, which would look like a catalog of ships. Norton uh, Grocery Company versus People's Net Bank. Number five, it has yeah. been settled. It has been settled beyond controversy that a national bank under federal law being limited in its powers and capability cannot lend its credit by guaranteeing the debts of another y'all this is deep all such contracts entered in uh, into by its officers are ultra buyers howard and foster company versus citizens net bank of union all right number six checks draft money orders and bank notes are not lawful money in the united states State versus is that Neyland 73 pack? Yeah, all right. And the last one, y'all, neither is included in his powers, uh, not incidental to them. Is it a part of the bank's business to lend its credit? If a bank could lend its credit as well as its money, it might, if it received compensation and was careful to put his name only to solid paper, 
make a great deal more than any lawful interest on its money would amount to. If not careful, the power would be the mother of panics. Indeed, lending credit is the exact opposite of lending money, which is the real business of a bank. For while the latter creates a liability in favor of the bank, the formal gives rise to the liability of, and it stopped off there. Yeah. It wouldn't allow me to. It cut off. Um, yeah, it was getting good, man. It was getting good. But 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 now you see what I'm speaking of. And these are law. These are law. This ain't made up. These are law. So the reason why I'm doing this too is is to talk about mortgages, but it's also to take the to take the veil off of the system. To take the veil off of the true as aspect of the system. So when you go into a bank and they say you owe us, now you have actual laws that say how I owe you. Mm. How I owe you. You literally read it here, right here in this section. Banks can't loan you nothing. You're loaning to them. For them mm. to make money off of you. Oh, Elena, I have a question. I have a question. All right, all right. Go ahead. So say I want to get financed to buy like a thousand units, right? Mm -hmm. And after I did like 20 of these, like, I'm not paying you back. I don't owe you nothing. Will I be on a do not lend list? How are you going to be on a do not lend list and you lend every time you put your signature on that has a million dollar value? You tell me. Mm. So, so will I ever run out of money for the million dollars? The million dollars, they need your signature to create the note. Whoa. I, you're the walking bank every last one of you. Mm. I, how you gonna run out? It's unlimited. It's unlimited at all. Each one of y'all need to be walking around asking where my black card is. Where my black card is? Uh. <laughs> Can you go to the next slide, Christina? I think that's it. So we yeah. Got it. yeah. So with that being said, that was that was presentation. Uh so I'm open for any questions y'all may have. Uh, <laughs> well, okay. First, that that's that that short uh, snippet because I know it's it's it's, it's never ending when it comes to the information. I need that if I can get that, it'll be beautiful. But then outside of that, um, hmm. So this this applies across the board for any and everything. Yes. So with so with that being the case, because you know, I guess well how I'm saying it is we really being played and bullied in the whole nine. What would be the best way to go about it when you go into these different institutions and situations to um first, stand, stand ten toes down and make sure that it's respected? Person. First and foremost, you say to them, before you enter into any contract, bank, school loan, mortgage, whatever. By the way, what kind of contract is that? Am I entering into? Is it a bilateral or unilateral? Mm. Oh, we don't know, sir. Well, I need it for y'all to find out before I sign anything. Right. Because guess what? They got to make money off of you because your sickness is about you than about a million dollars. So when you go get a mortgage, a mortgage is an investment contract. It's not a real estate contract. Okay? Mm. So there's no law requiring your deed to be recorded. So when they have you sign over, when they have you sign the, the deed of trust. That's when you own the house, right there with the deed of trust, where you transfer the rights over is 
can you sign the mortgage? Because you see how when you deed where it has the bank name and then it has the when it has the the um the uh, uh the bank's name in your name. Well when they have you sign the the mortgage, that's a double close. Mm. I'll tell you that. So if they don't give you full disclosure of what kind of contract it is, or what or what's going on with the with the transaction as the transaction is occurring, as soon as you find out this information, you can challenge every little bit of it because guess what? The state takes control of the property. It's not your mortgage. It's not your mortgage, it's your state. The state takes ownership when the deed is recorded. But the, the, the deed doesn't have to be recorded. It should have been mailed back to you, but it wasn't. That's called deed fraud. Because the attorney records it. And the only reason why the state records it because they get it under they get it under three tax categories residential commercial and agricultural and your houses are not residential or private dwelling residential is a commercial term so the reason why they get taxed because they have it listed as a commercial property when it's supposed to be a private dwelling that means it was never supposed to be recorded. You see. And these are the caveats that we beat them in court every single time. We'll never lose. Next question. Orlando, can you go through like what the process looks like in order to get your mortgage eliminated? I know a couple of people on this call got mortgages. Well, I'm, I'm not going to get, throw out the, well, I can, I'll throw out the process, but I don't want to get people confused in, in what I'm saying because, right. you know, it'll, all right, so just in the, in the nutshell, what we would do is we would put the mortgage company on the we would send them correspondence. And we would also put the county recorder on and the first attorney, the first, the first attorney that recorded. And different things that that. And then there's the whole other process we do. But those are the logistics of we put everyone on notice that had something to do with it. The main, the main key element that would be the attorney, the law firm, the uh, the uh, uh, the state, and the different things that because the state is the one that actually the owner the property and whatnot. So your mortgage companies are only running. They're only the front face for, they're, they're like the shield because the state is owning the property when it's recorded. So they're, they're running interference. If anybody knows about football, they're like running the interference for the state because if they know, the state knows that if most people find out who actually is in control of it, Y'all would be having to stay in court <laughs> like tomorrow. You know. Like that 2008, the 2008 bubble, I'm behind. Nobody should have lost their house. Nobody. Because the state owned all those houses. It wasn't the mortgage company, it was the state that they lived in. And if they just sued them, it would have stopped every four clues. People died on them things. 
because they could they was emotionally distraught. So America killed them in 2008. Question. Yeah. Can you go retro with it? Because it's like I had a house and end up losing it. Um, and I did look on the papers and before I kind of knew all this, I was peeping it just off my, off my regular mind. Like, this looked crazy because it had all the information on it. So is once it get to a certain point, is it reversible or is it possible to uh, do it in retro? I mean, if you if you if you want a house back, I mean, it depends. Do you know what condition the house is in? Uh, no, nah, I ain't seen it in a minute, but it was in a decent. It was in a decent area, and it, it was it, in the you, area it was in. It was straight. If you were to go after them, of course, but you know. I mean, it's going to take some time. This is this is this is work, people. It, it's, right. it can be done, but it but the court system, the court system is going to take time. But the the average aspect is like anywhere from six to twelve months. But that that's just gauging period. But it shouldn't take no no longer time than that. But we we kind of notify everybody. Uh, right away when we get the get the file, like we bring in the secretary of state, state, um, and everybody, you know, department of justice, like this goes full fledged beyond the beyond the. So this might be the perfect time since everybody is kind of it's going into a recession and people losing their cars and houses all that. Right. For 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 poor people. They want to throw that word recession. Okay. You want to invest in, you got probably lean into that motherfucker. Buy, yeah. Buy more. Right. Buy okay. More. So that would this be a perfect time not only to lean in, but to like how I lost the house. Would it be would it be a good time to lean into that motherfucker? Yeah. Okay. I need to get with you in some kind of way then. All right, well. We- you can back channel me. <laughs> back channel. Oh my gosh. Let me, I'm gonna put um Orlando's Instagram on um in the chat if you guys don't already have it. So I know you know somebody else got because he he's been asking Buku questions. So I know somebody else in this room got questions. Um I'm actually curious. I want to know like about like does this work for credit cards and stuff like that? Like credit cards and you like utility companies and stuff like that? Unilateral contracts work for anything. Yes, this is all unilateral contract. We talked about this, Christina. You know. Oh yeah, I know, I know, I know. We talked about it. I'm just, uh, I'm ready to stop paying my electricity. So what's up? Hey, what's up? I don't want the light to get cut off, though. No, but you, but you gotta, but you gotta. So, so you what gotta, I need to do with the utility companies? All right. Well affidavit and then you got to put them on notice that they got 15 days of response they got fit i got I, ladies and gentlemen i have an affidavit we gotta we're fixing my back system because um someone uh ran a play and they took like three of my affidavit paid for them and then canceled them so we so stripe has now play with my account and whatnot. So I'm trying to get that adjusted. So it's it just literally happened like two days. <laughs> Somebody brought them and then they canceled them and then you know and then you know so they basically hustled their way to get the affidavit paid them and then uh said they they uh, got hacked the credit card got hacked. but that's a whole different do you want me, do you want me to put the link to the affidavit in the chat? Uh well, yeah, but I wanted to, I mean, I'm I'm um matter of fact, you know what? How many people in here? How many people? 14. 14. Uh, all right. Well, Christina, this is what I'm gonna do. All right, well, give them give them all the 14 affidavits. You want me to send everybody the affidavit? Go ahead. 
14 and 15. Okay, Orlando. Thank you, sir. No wow, that's a blessing. I've never seen you did this before. Wait, no, wait, we have no, no, no more light, no more water, no more gas bills. <laughs> wait a minute, I'm like shocked oh, right man. now. I'm like, is Orlando? He, he, he using his X Man powers. He, he right. saving the day. <laughs> Sheesh. Okay, y'all. Let me let me drop this uh this in here. So with that, with that, I'm gonna get on a call with y'all to explain and walk y'all through how to fill out the application. So all y'all, all y'all just um uh send me a DM to my to my Instagram and we can do it. Now, since I dropped that though, since I dropped it, y'all promoted to other people to go buy. Exactly. How much How much you selling them for, Orlando? A thousand. So we, we tell them 1,500, just cut us 500. <laughs> <laughs> Oh man, y'all funny. <laughs> but when they go to the website, they're gonna be like, well, it's only a thousand. So I don't know how you're gonna work that extra five though. I don't know. I might make up some type of some I'll make up something. We're gonna we gonna get we gonna get it. We're gonna get it. I appreciate you, brother. Thank you so much for this gift. No problem. Hey, Orlando, I have a question. Go ahead, sir. So let's say if my mortgage is paid off and mm -hmm. let's just say that it's worth roughly, let's just say 300 k can I then go back and um, yes, you find these yes. to Yes, they, they, you gave them extra money. Their mortgage was already paid when you was at home. How is that when you get out of the shower? So essentially, can I get the money back that I paid or just the value of the property? Yes, no, you get the money back you paid. Plus, they owe you damage. So. Okay, thank you. I appreciate it. No problem. <clears throat> okay, I dropped the affidavit in there. Now I'm dropping... Um... So Michelle asked a question in the chat, Orlando. She said, does this work for probate properties? Oh, it should have never went to probate. They ripped you out by going to probate. You know what I mean? As you see, they never gave you anything. So why would it go to probate? Yeah. If the, if the banks don't loan you money, it should have never went to probate. The original owner passed away. So she's in probate with a property. Okay, well, get it out of probate. It don't need to be there. And you can get it removed out of probate. Really? They don't have no, they don't have no legal authority. The deed was illegally recorded. The deed was illegally recorded. This is private property. This is a private dwelling. Nobody needs to be going to probate. It, it's illegal to go to probate. Unless you're using that property for commercial use. If you're, but they have it classified as commercial use. And it is illegal if you are using it as a private dwelling, which it is. And it is illegal. Probate is illegal. Period. Wow. I did not know that. Probate is illegal. If you're using it and it's not a commercial property, the only people that need to be going to probate is all commercial property. That's it. Oh, okay, I get it now. So they, on purpose, they mislabeling it. It's a private dwelling, but they mislabeling it on purpose as a commercial property. For tax reasons. Yes. yes, you want your money. Okay, listen, we just watched that video that you showed us. Like, we are freaking slaves trying to pay off debt, like modern day slavery. Y'all already owned it from day one. 
Yeah, but see, that's the people who decided to still be asleep and stay in the system. Not I. Yeah, you 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 definitely showed us a whole cheat code of how to exit the matrix. That video is definitely how to, you can unplug from the matrix. You know, I do have a question. So, what? so for my properties, um, will I have to go and request a variance to change the zoning? Since it's zone, like most of them, they're like zone like R4, R5 and such. Get with me, me and my partner, we do that. I mean, we don't need you trying to figure it out. We do, we've been doing it. We got one in California, New York, um, LA right now. Um, we got one in Ohio. It's back channel me. We'll talk about everything and then we can, we can I mean, Get your, get your property situation. Sounds good. Okay. Yeah, I don't know what back channel means, but I put Orlando's Instagram in the chat. <laughs> back channel this is not Clubhouse, back, but I put back, Orlando's back, Instagram in. Back, back, back channel me on Instagram, y'all. <laughs> He's using different social media terminologies over here. We on Zoom, y'all. Worst behavior. My bad, my bad. So that's what's going on, y'all. So now I want y'all to think differently. Think differently on everything you know about finance. Everything you heard about finances. Now, I mean, you should not be thinking the same way when you go to work tomorrow. You should not be processing everything you hear the same way tomorrow. So when you hear the word recession, you should be thinking different now with the information you heard tonight. So anybody got some more questions? Everybody quiet? Yeah, okay. so, so what's the play with the credit cards? Like, do, do we use this for the credit cards as well? Like this gift that you did, this Christmas gift you gave us? Listen, ladies and gentlemen, you use this for all contracts in the United States. <laughs> this contract, this affidavit is used for every contract in the United States. All right, you guys, I put it in the chat. So um, it's in a, uh, like a word doc. Yes, car loan suit. Yeah. All contracts, yeah. I'm gonna say it again, all contracts, even student loan. Because guess what? There's a form called the SSA 89 form. If they don't get you to sign that form, that form is that I mean they get approval before they run your social security number called the SSA 89 form. If they don't get your approval, that when they run that social, that was illegal. They need you to sign off. Somebody put something in the chat. I miss it. Yeah, it looks like they're not able to um to download it. So I put the Word document. It's a Word doc for the affidavit. I put it in the chat as an attachment. Is anybody able to download it? So I see two no's. No, no, no. Nobody's able to download it. Since I, since I gave it to you already, Christine is going to, uh, she's going to scan it into her system yeah. tomorrow and she'll send it to all of y'all. I'm, yeah, gonna, I, I'm going to email blast all of you guys. Hold on, let me just see who's in here. Let me take a picture. 
So everyone who's in here, all 15 people, I'm just going to email you guys the attachment. I don't know what's wrong with Zoom. It's not my fault. We in the matrix. <laughs> yes, we are. So what do so what do we do after we send it to our credit card company? Well, you let them you let them do what they need to do. Uh, give them the fifteen day that and see if they respond. If they don't, then you start legal proceedings. But you don't send it. You don't send it to the average Joe Smo that work that that answers the phone. You got to go find your underwriter. You got to go find the CFO, the president, the vice president. Because you want to put them in the actual case. And, and they have to show because it's going to have your contract and we're going to dissect your contract. Because your contract is going to be on file with the affidavit. And they have to answer to it. If they don't answer to it, then you can, I mean, take the company in court and take them to court as well. Hmm. And if they can't prove what they say, they owe you money. But let's remember, for every quote unquote loan, banks can't loan, loan money and they can't lend credit. Remember that. Is that for credit unions too? Yes, sir. That's for the whole financial system, sir. You are the walking bank. You are the reason why banks are in existence. You I got to thought of that. You got to understand how much power you truly have. Without you, if you don't transact business for them, because we're on a credit system, if you don't transact, they can't stay in business. If everyone in this call, if it was a thousand people and all y'all say the day of tomorrow, we all gonna call off today. What you think gonna happen to that company? Ain't no work gonna happen. Huh? No work gonna get done. No. You don't go under. What do you think their revenue stream gonna look like? Gonna, it's going to drop down tremendously. Exactly. Imagine if you did that for one full year. It would put them out of the same way with the bank. If y'all ran to the court and said, show me where y'all finance all the transactions in the United States, it would fold the banks like wet suits. The mind shift, this is why when you go on every mastermind, you ain't going to hear this on no mastermind. Because this is really going to get you on planet and really get you to the back. Because you control, you truly control the back with this. You control every narrative there is. When you know how to maneuver the system, you control it all. It's not based on your economy. It's based on you understanding what type of system you're dealing with and what type of contract that you always enter into. And once you understand the concept of, wait a minute, all these contracts are unilateral, and I'm financing it through my credit. 
that shit click like I never think about finances again the same way. Your credit score has nothing to do with you getting a credit card. It's the information on the report based on getting that credit. They don't give a good goddamn about the score. It's based on the information. Credit credit score didn't come out until 1989. So it's the information in your reports that basically says, will you get that 500K? Will you get that million dollar diamond? They don't give a good goddamn about the fucking school. Because what were they doing before the silver came out in 1989? FICO. That's when the FICO was introduced. They were still giving loans on handshakes. Belief. If I say my credit was good, then it was good. But they don't look at the credit score. They don't care. They look at the report. Your consumer report, guess what? You can control the net. Do you know there is if there's no bank, if there's no banks loaning money and they can't loan, then how is it? Then how can you be late on a on a credit card payment. You can't. You control the outcome of what your report looks like. Do you know under 16 Truth the Lending Act 1666B? If they don't send you a payment or send you the statement in 21 days then the whole shit is invalid. Because guess what? Do you know under the RICO Act, 1341 and 1343, that if banks can't loan debt, if banks can't loan money or credit, and when you get something in the mail, guess what that is? It's mail fraud. You mean if you get a statement? Yeah, if you get a statement and they say you owe something, what you just saw tonight, if it said that banks can't loan money, how is it, how you owe that? When they send it to you in the mail, they're making fraudulent claims. They're making false claims on something they can't validate. There is no money in the system. Gold and silver was the true essence of the money. We're not using gold and silver. Article 1, Section 10 of the Constitution. No state shall coin money, credit, or anything else. It's illegal right now under the Constitution to even be running credit because it said under the Republic, that land is free of, to all people. Come on, people. Shift the mind. Shift the mind. Be, in, be of the system, not in the system. I'm a person of the system, but I'm not in the system. You can control your narrative, how you move in this system once you have the understanding and the knowledge. Any more questions? 
question. <clears throat> so, so in nature, to a certain degree, all transaction is bilateral because it's always going to be two people. But unilateral, really unilateral is the one that, if anything, you should have to put effort towards. Unilateral is dealing with all companies, but they're not giving you full disclosure on what type of contract that you're entering into. Bilateral is if me and you negotiate a real estate deal. We're sitting down as two individuals negotiating no terms and conditions. If they're not doing that in that contract, if you're not sitting down with another individual and they're not signing it, as a second party, then you just entered into a unilateral Okay, so so I get it. So I, that's basically kind of what I was saying. Like, if it's not two people talking, which that's how it should go naturally, but when they try to hide or play games, it turned unilateral in a sense on its own. So yeah. you have to take control of it and make it uh, bilateral because you're a man. You know, we, we like, like a man, like like how to like the regular like natural this rules go. Thing, this is the key thing. When you get something in the mail, right, and they say you owe something, right, and you know, did I sit down with that individual? Did I negotiate that terms and conditions? Right. If the answer is no. Don't be so quick to act because if you act on it and you pay it without challenging it. Now you just accept it and imply contract. They implied you owe something. They didn't prove that you owed it. They said you owed it. But I could say you owe a whole lot. But did I prove it? No. But I just had you believe in you owed it because I sent you a piece of paper that looked good that said, oh, you got to understand, remember, the United States is a business, it's not a country. It's a business that was established in 1925. I'm just saying. So knowing this information and knowing that everything is a facade at this point, you should challenge, you should challenge everything to a degree anyway, but you should challenge it all because at the end of the day, like you said, it's a thin, it's a thin piece of wet paper. Actually, you just have to push you through. Know how to, what, how to challenge and the structure which in the challenge. Okay, for sure. I mean, but everybody gets into the sovereign, non-sovereign. You're already sovereign from the door. I'm not talking about sovereign. This ain't. You're naturally, you're naturally sovereign because God gave you the right to be sovereign. You don't need a contract to make the sovereign. The sovereign already. But before anybody be like, oh, this sovereign. No, this ain't got nothing to do with time. I'm sovereign because I'm a natural man. Just like a woman, she's a natural woman. Your, your sovereignty ain't based on a contract. The sovereignty is based on you took breath of the breath and land of the land. Your feet touch land, you were sovereign the day you was born and died. So I ain't got nothing to, to, we ain't talking about cyber. We're talking about contract. Is the contract, if they misrepresent the contract, then the contract is void on the paper. Period. Period. All contract, if it ain't done about two people, it's all unilateral. And they, if they don't give you full disclosure, then it's not that. Any more questions? <laughs> yeah, my mind is just blowing, Orlando. Every time you come on and you talk, you be dropping bombs, man. Dropping bombs. Look forward to your lives like every day on Instagram. 
As I said before, if you don't make a live, I'm gonna feel some type of way about it. <laughs> well, thanks, man. I, I appreciate it, man. I, I appreciate it. And Lando, I'm, I'm giving everybody else a chance because I can ask you a hundred thousand questions, but I ain't gonna do that. <laughs> no, this is bad channel, man. man. No, I mean, well, yeah. bad channel me on Instagram. Drop, drop the numbers in the chat. I sent, you, I sent you my email and the whole nine. I, I already hit you, let you know I was on the Zoom and everything. I'm, you don't understand. I was about to read everything you put up there, the, the stuff I could see. <laughs> yeah, I was getting off. You stopped me. <laughs> <laughs> but, that, but that's what I want. I want. I like interaction in the aspect because, because you know, you hear so much on masterminds or, or whatever the case may be. But the situation is this. You got to really fully understand what's, what's going on on, on the service on, and do a deep dive into the, into the system so you really know what's going on. You know, it's just that simple. And to really understand what, how the dynamics of everything is moving. And that's the fundamental Thing about all of this. because when when the light bulb went went on and it came on for me about how this system is really moving, man, it was a game changer. It's a game changer. Do you know that the IRS can wipe out all that? That's all I'm gonna say. They just choose not to. No, no, you got to bring it to their attention. They're not going to do something that you don't bring attention. So once I let you know, like, uh, I mean, they're a debt collecting agent. But how they collect the debt when there is no money? So all this is a discharging system. Discharge, discharge. When you pay something, you're not paying it, you're discharged. The federal donors are a discharging mechanism. They're not, they're not currency and money. Money is gold and silver. Legal tender is not money. But every hundred dollar bill is seventeen cents to print. Y'all can Google it at any given time. Now, but if they're printing money at seventeen cents, but well, banks can't loan money. To them. Hmm. What a what an in, interesting caveat. Any other questions? I think the room is speechless. Speechless, huh? <laughs> they finally um, found out that they the they oh. the they the creditor, <laughs> right? They uh -huh. the creditor. Yeah, y'all the walking bank. Mm -hmm. Now, I don't worry about my credit. I listen. I'm gonna be honest with you. I had, a, I had the 700 credit score. When I found out that the IRS paid for everything in this, all these was unilateral contracts, I started worrying about my score. Because <laughs> it's not the score they worried about. It's the report. It's the report. Yeah, that's it's been proven too. Because sometimes people um that got like a well, I heard people that had got like eight hundred, they still can't get, they still can't get loans because they because their profile is not right. So, right. right. So there's a difference between the profile, the profile and the score. The score, the score is dictated by the profile. I I, I mean, how much sense do that make that you have an eight hundred score, but you can't get? You can't get a car. That's crazy. 
but then, but then, but but the because it's too. They say it's too thin. It ain't thick enough. Separate. You don't got enough stuff on it. No, it's two separate. It's two separate types of contract. It's two separate types of contract. Because what it is is the the score is an algorithm, but the algorithm is based on the the report. It's based on the information. So if it's based on the information, then you can control that information. Because if there is no money and banks can't loan, then how are you getting all these denied? Because it's a unilateral contract that you enter into. Any more questions? So when you go to the next mastermind and they be like, well, you know, you got to put up 50K to get this and you can't get real estate without this. Remember this, remember this class. Remember, <laughs> remember this night. That's why you'll never see me on, on, on anybody's, uh, on anybody's, uh, with tour. Because <laughs> I'm giving too much of the truth. Yeah, it tears down everything you think of. Yeah. Sure do. Sure do. Because you already, you already, you already did everything. That you, you already financed everything. Y'all still got any more questions? Oh, uh, I want to know where where I've I've been trying to look at that that private education because I keep looking when I every time I see it on there it keeps saying like schools and universities. No, but see, this is the thing. Think about it. if money if they can't loan credit. See, they're not going to give you. They're not going to tell you you control. You have to. This is where your discernment comes in. At. I want y'all to think about this. If banks can't loan and they need you to sign everything, think about how many things a day you sign. The signature has the value. Yeah. So if your signature has the value and you sign per day, but when you read on it, it says, schools and all that. Yeah, but who finances the school? You get a student loan. Who finances the student loan? You do. Because what's the first thing? We got to run your credit. So you're financing transaction of the loan. That's why you're a private educational lender. That's why when they say hard money loan, a private lender, we're all private lenders. We just have to know how to utilize. <laughs> Hello? Yeah. <laughs> any, more, any more questions? I know I don't have any questions, but I'm I'm just like everybody else, just mind blown. And uh, I just want to say I appreciate you for coming on and sharing. Uh, just yeah. 
Thank you. Because I want y'all to think differently about everything that this system tells you. Everything. Same thing, car insurance, no different. No matter what y'all ask me in this chat, it's all gonna be the same thing. I know y'all can't believe it, but it's true. So that, that that's why that's why uh, <laughs> uh, creating our own bank is probably the best way, just to borrow from ourselves. You already doing that with Infinite Bank. Yeah. You can just cut out the middleman. That's all. the banks is the middleman. Because they're gonna make money off you. Because guess what? Everybody that has their 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 sell. They're selling your information. Data information is the number one revenue stream in America. Oil, all the oil is second. Data information has now overtook took oil to be the number one revenue stream for the United States. You want to get, quote unquote, you want to get rich real quick? Within six months, start a data 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 company. Do do like Alexis Next. Build the company like Next Alexis Next. Yeah. The government will, well, the corporation. Let me not call it government, but the corporation will pay you billions of dollars for personal information on people. <sighs> so. <laughs> Thank you, Orlando. We really appreciate you. And we appreciate the gift that you gave to the community tonight. So I emailed it to everyone. If you don't have it in your inbox, please check your spam folder because it is there. And if you didn't get it, then text the community line so that I can resend it to you. So thank you so, so, so much for pouring into the community and giving us this valuable information that we did not know. And now we have some tools so that we can fight these companies because I'm about to send my electric company a thing or two. So with that, Christina, I'm going to need a copy of this so I can chop this up for my content. So yes, I'm going to email it to you after. They probably, they probably, um, what you got it on, MP3? MP4, uh, MP4, yeah, MP4, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Send, me the, send me the file so I have it. Yes, I'm going to send it to you. And um, it's going to be on our YouTube channel tomorrow. So if anybody wants to catch the replay and um, go over the information again, then you can catch it on Seven Ways to Wealth YouTube channel. So thank you so much. And we will catch you guys next week for a special masterclass is going to be a little different it's going to be twisted next week so stay tuned oh this wasn't twisted enough <laughs> oh no this was twisted oh this the ultimate <laughs> <laughs> like, right. wait a i wasn't twisted enough wow okay no yeah i mean this is definitely <laughs> twisted tomorrow i mean next week is going to be a, it's going to be a little out of the box though but right. so we'll see we'll see but thank you. We appreciate you. Thank you, everybody. Have a good night. Peace, y'all. Have a good one.